they were part of your daily ins and outs, you know, like it's just really hard sometimes to recover from that. So when people say someone died of a broken heart, that's a real thing. People do die of a broken heart. And what is a heart attack? Your heart is attacking you because you're out of balance for whatever reason. And so because of these, these, these precious thin layers of tissue of the heart, the damage, the damage of the heart from fear, frustration, hopelessness, just uh, just having a tough time in life um, is, is, is really, really hard. And a lot of times before most people can even get into adulthood, they've already survived a broken heart just from their upbringing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just from the abandonment of a parent mm -hmm. or some type of guardian or being mistreated or having some type of violence done against them um, spiritually, mentally, physically. You know, so by the time most of us get into high school, our heart chakra is blown. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah. And so now, when we talk about what does it mean to be cold hearted, mm -hmm. when your heart chakra shuts down, what's above? The throat chakra. Mm -hmm. So now you got a hard time expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's below it? The solar chakra. That's your energy center. That's where we hold, really where, we put, like where you also hold some spirit energy. So if that's affected, now your your ability to be creative and your expression and all that kind of stuff and your energy is now affected. So you put all those things together, you a hot mess. <laughs> and now you got to do this work, you know, to really get, you know, things back together and in balance. And... It's really, really a hard thing um, for a lot of people, especially because you can't heal the heart doing the things that you did to get it where it was at in the first place. Mm -hmm. like, you know, so you have to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. And most people don't have anything to measure that again. Mm -hmm. So if all you've known is a bunch of things that break your heart, now that means that you have to reset your mindset. You have to reset what you know and think about God. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, reset how you breathe even. How you, how you just concepts, like you have to change your whole mindset in order to really heal that. And so with Babylon, with all these different things going on, the reality is, well, um, okay, how do I do this without all of these distractions? So, you know, when people talk about just, just selling off everything and moving up into the Himalayan mountains, it might be a good thing if you're really trying to heal your heart. It's kind of hard to do when you got every day, you got to worry about bills and do this and do that. All that extra stress keeps you from actually being able to heal your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So our everyday, we were not born to pay bills. Mm, I mean. Work 40, 50 hours a week. No. I mean. You know, we weren't born, we was not born to be smelling all the smog and, you know, all of these things and these genetically modified foods and, and drinking bad water and all of these things that we have to deal with every day. And so, you know, and that's, so we're talking about the, the spiritual aspects, the physical aspects of the heart. And the emotional aspects of the heart, because the heart responds to the emotions more than any other organ, really. You know, and our organ systems is so important because each organ is is um, represented by certain emotions. Your kidneys are dealing with fear, you know, and, and your spleen is just like frustration. So when you feel these different things in your body, something is wrong. Something is going on. You're reacting to something. Tune into that. When you get around certain people, how does your heart feel? How your kidneys feel? How your spleen feel? How your liver feel? How your mind feel? You get around certain people, you catch a migraine or a headache, or you just feel an uneasiness, something ain't right. You don't need a definition. You just need to trust your intuition. Whatever will come later, or maybe it won't, but trust the process. I know when I've done it, it could be years later, but somehow, somewhere, somebody come up and say something, and I'm like, oh, okay, that correlates with something that happened two years ago. But I'm glad I listened to myself, because like I said, the heart is going to tell you the truth, but that mind is going to make you overthink or underthink or think your way out of something or change your mind. And this is really the reason why a lot of people don't live out their dreams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's because they stay in their mind too much. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, I think, I don't do. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly, I'm, I, I, I wrote it down. I got a business plan. I got all this stuff. <laughs> I'm just, I just got, I just got some, some words on paper. Because my heart isn't really in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many people do we know that get into relationships, their heart isn't really in it? You you trying to work a job, you know your heart isn't really in it. You, you just <laughs> <laughs> it's just a reality. You're, you're not really in it. But you're trying to make yeah. yourself be in it. And you know a lot of times the driving force behind us forcing ourselves to be into something that we're not is money. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Because we need to survive. We're in survival mode all the time. Survival mode will kill your heart quick, too. Mm. You know why? Because you start making choices that really go against your spirit in order to survive that you wouldn't normally do if money wasn't an issue. Mm. Yeah. You start compromising yourself. So when you compromise your heart, everything is now vulnerable. Mm. Everything is vulnerable because it's it's the bridge to everything. Mm. How my heart operates, you know, okay, my heart got to be on point for me to recognize the love in me to see the love in you. Yes. How can I say namaste to you when I can't say it to myself? Mm. <laughs> and really mean that. <laughs> so, this is the part where we have to be clear about why the heart is so important. And since the beginning of time, has man not always been about the connection with something that we call God? It doesn't matter what culture you look at. Everybody has a concept of God, and everybody has a concept of heart connected to God. Everybody. Because the pure, the pure your heart is, the pure your connection to God is. The, 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 any lack that you have in that space is going to affect your relationship. And see, this is a deep thing because when we talk about having and bringing forth children with a broken heart, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's that look like? Mm -hmm. Now, your heart is broken, and now you don't brought forth seeds. How you going to teach them love Mm -hmm. the right way? Mm -hmm. So so what you about to do is raise your kids with a false, ideology of what love is because you don't really know what it is. Right. Mm. You kind of winged it. <laughs> and then we figure out why your kids is in this school to jail pipeline. Mm. We can blame society. There is a part of that that we definitely have to blame society for. Mm-hmm. But your children and your house and how you raise them to love themselves and love God and love people around them is going to be the power that helps them combat what's going on outside the house. But if you don't give them that, and they can't they can't get it from you and there's nobody around then where does that leave them mm-hmm. so now you know there's this generation of cold-hearted people mm-hmm. you know and then these people get in positions to run the world mm-hmm. <laughs> these are the people that's in government mm-hmm. do y'all think trump got a good heart <laughs> Do we have one did at he, all? Did, did he, did he heart. Like his heart was in it? Heart left. I mean, because we know wow. what that looks like. Yeah. We know what it looks like for to see a tyrant. You know, a tyrannical person is really a person that has no connection to their heart chakra. Mm. Mm. That's really what a tyrant is. Anytime we have people that decide that it's okay to pollute water, your heart ain't right. Mm. Anytime we got people that think it's okay to kill people, women and children, and bomb people for oil, mm. your heart is mm. not right. Mm. Anytime we got people that feel like genetically modified foods is, is, is good to put on the market, your heart is not right. Mm. I'm asking myself if I know that, so we're human and then there's mankind. Does mankind have a heart? Mm. Or is it just who? Because I feel like mankind is what runs this whole thing, and obviously there's no heart in our in our government. You know, there's no heart. So when we talk about things that are happening and what's going on, the shelves are getting less and less in the stores. If you're paying attention, I hope you I hope you prepare for whatever's about to happen. But at the end of the day, put your heart in it and pay attention because they want us to not get into the heart. Because when you get it, the, all of these distractions are keeping from you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if they really just let things be and let us be what we are without interruption, what could we do? Mm. How long would it take us to take this thing over? Mm. Because we know that historically we're the most spiritual people on the whole planet. Our history says so. Science says so. There's no way you can lie about that. Mm. We know what we're doing when it comes to our spiritual welfare, but the interruptions is what the problem is. Mm. Mm. If we were left alone to be who we are, how we are, and to worship how we are, we would all fall into a level of greatness that we don't even know. Because we don't have the hustle and bustle to get in the way. And we can really be ourselves. And and it's, it's, it's a lot. So I think about this stuff, but... But when this, when this, you know, chakra's in balance, you know, 
like I said, you're at risk of, of other ones being affected. And so, you know, the heart represents healing, growth, balance, abundance, compassion, and true reasoning, and how we see and experience love in the world. So like I said, it's the fourth chakra. So this is represented by the colors green and pink. A heart chakra, green and pink. Any time you just feel like you want to get more into your heart chakra, color therapy is so important. People don't really realize that. Like, have you ever noticed when you go into a jewelry store, the walls are always some shade of pink? Mm-hmm. Have y'all noticed that? Yeah. And it's because it promotes a feeling of love and like, you know, just connectivity and stuff. So you come here, you might not think you go about it, but it's the energy that they set, you know? So the expectation, you're supposed to come here and, you know, buy a wedding band or engagement ring or whatever. So they kind of cultivate that loving energy. When you look at like, think about how many restaurants, fast food restaurants use the colors yellow and red. That's Wendy's, yeah. McDonald's, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, like Sonic, Murder King. King. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm saying, and I'm just showing y'all something about color therapy because what we're talking about, root chakra. So if you got a low functioning root chakra and you're looking at that red at McDonald's, there's a connection. You want that Big Mac. You don't realize it though. And then you got your sacral chakra above that, which is your expression. You know, this also has to do with how you support yourself. So how you're feeding yourself, what you put into your body. So now we're connecting the root chakra, how you express yourself in the world with this yellow energy. And now it's all over the place. And you're trying to figure out why you feel triggered every time you see a McDonald's commercial. Mm-hmm. Why every time you like, oh, that looks kind of good. I, I don't eat that no more, but I at least go over there and get some of them, them beef fat tallow french fries. But anyway, mm-hmm. so, you know, because they do put beef fat in french fries. Yeah. If you're vegan and you're eating french fries at McDonald's, they're not vegan. Just FYI. Damn. All right, so just just want you to know that yeah, they have big losses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they sued McDonald's yeah, okay. for like a long time because the the Indian pop the um vegetarian population of India sued and they lost a like, big time over there. So yeah, so all right, um, where was I? Because I want to I want to stay with this, but um. So the chakra above the heart, like I said, is the throat chakra, it's the fifth chakra. This chakra represents our voice, our expression, our ability to manifest um, through sound vibration, um, just anything vocally. It's also intuitive, inspirational, calming. So when we talk about manifesting, so this is, this is good for manifesting. We know that sound you know, um, is, can be light. And light can change things, obviously. So how we use our voice is so important. And if you can't use your voice, then you have an issue with being able to manifest. Mm -hmm. They go hand in hand. Because again, if your heart isn't in it, then you're not going to manifest what it is that you need. And it's not going to come through the way that you need it to. And see, there's a such thing Mm -hmm. as um, manifesting things, but it comes in incomplete. Mm -hmm. And so this is the difference between when you know if, if certain chakras are completely shut down, it's like you ask, you ask, you ask, and like nothing's really happening. If your chakras are like they're still spinning, but they're like slowly spinning, you can pull in some things, but it's not going to come right. And it's what I call creating a false start for yourself, mm-hmm. where you take 10 steps mm-hmm. and get knocked back eight. Mm-hmm. And then some people do this for years until you get mm-hmm. tired and then you fall into a depression because you're trying to figure out, why am I not being blessed? Why am I not moving forward? It's because, wait, because really your heart is not fully in it. And you got to do that work. So you're trying to manifest stuff. So it's like, you're like, okay, um, I'm trying to manifest this car. You get the car, but then it's a lemon and two weeks later it dies on you. Mm-hmm. But you just spent all your money on that car. Mm-hmm. And you don't have no warranty. <laughs> so now you're right back to square one, trying to work again and resave money. So no, it's important to manifest correctly the first time. I mean... Don't ask for it if you're really not ready to fully receive it, if you know you're not really, because that's the other thing. When we, when we ask for things through our heart and we ask to manifest things, then the other thing is how, how is it going to get to you? Because sometimes the thing is, you know, there is, of course, faith. But there's also, like, are you creating channels to receive blessings? Mm-hmm. Or are you just kind of sitting there just... Right. <laughs> It's like, no, go ahead and start your business. Go ahead and start doing the things that you've been dreaming about so that you can open up these channels for the things that you're asking for to come through in the first place. But you got to get into that heart chakra. So it's like, what does that really look like? That's like you're praying about it. That's 
you know, protecting yourself from, from you know, people, places, and things that don't feel good. You know, being, being um, intentional about your surroundings. And and your your belief systems and you know how you how you um, discipline yourself and what your rituals are every day, that is what's going to really make a difference. And and forgiveness. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. So many people are quick to learn how to forgive everybody else, and you haven't forgiven yourself. Mm. Mm. We want to outwardly forgive everybody all the time, and we can't even forgive ourselves. Mm. And then sometimes the opposite is true as well. You know, we, we want to forgive ourselves, but we can't find forgiveness in certain people. But it's so much more expanded than that because, yes, there's going to be people that cross you in life, that's going to do you wrong, that's not going to make you feel well. And so the hardest thing to do is forgive those people that hurt you the most. The people that mistreated you and, and had you down and out, that's the, that's the hardest thing. And that's the first thing that will come in and kick your heart right in the, right in the center. Just, just kick it. And you just like, oh, my goodness. And, you know, breathing, you know, is so important because we will talk about heart breathing because I want to teach you all how to really um, get that energy in the heart. And it's so sensitive um, that I want to make sure everybody does it correctly, too, because the heart is very, very sensitive. Um, so below the heart, of course, is the solar plexus. This is the chakra that feeds into our creativity, imagination, energy, playfulness, optimism, vitality. This is our third chakra, uh, represented by the color yellow. Okay? So yellow... That's the sun, right? So if this is where we hold our energy at, then it makes sense that it would be yellow. You know, we don't have to figure it out. It's already been figured out for us. Okay, so yellow. Um, and when the, when the solar plexus is negatively affected, it causes imbalances in your creativity. It blocks your lack of energy. Um, you have fatigue, gas, bloating, liver issues, lack of confidence, and procrastination. So ugh, you tie that in with a, a, a closed heart, that's a lot going on right there. You know what I mean? So just even dealing with the throat chakra and dealing with the solar plexus chakra, being affected from the heart chakra, that's already a lot of damage. So if you let that persist, now that's going to move up to what? Third eye. Now you really ain't seeing nothing clearly. You really can't receive no messages. You really can't hear. You really can't feel. You start losing a lot of your other senses. You know, that root chakra is how you see yourself. So moving down even further, how you see yourself, um, how you see yourself in the world, you know, what your strength is, you know, how you're showing up. So if that's affected now, what? We're, we're, we're showing up cold with no feelings, lack of expression, and can't say nothing to do nothing. You're just like trapped inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. And if that's not a recipe for depression and suicidal thoughts, I don't know what else would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it. That's like a good recipe, you know, for people <laughs> to just be like, I'm, I'm over it. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be here. And it, it. You really have to shift your whole reality to that's dig yourself hole. out of that hole. It's a hole. Mm -hmm. That's a. That's a hole that you dig yourself into, and then you're in this hole, and you're looking up like, ain't nobody throwing no ladder, ain't no rope. Oh, but if you ask most high, you get that rope. If you really want to change those things, you'll get the things that you need, but it, it you can only receive it if you're if you're asking with sincerity mm. to to be relieved of it, to to find the healing, to find the forgiveness, to find, you know, your balance in that, to find your peace in that. Because what you don't make peace with over time slowly eats away at the heart. Mm. It's mm. a slow process in some instances. And it's not, even something, even even the loss of someone that you just, just really, like I said, you know, even just losing something that you really love, you know, can can bring you down. You know, you don't want to die out with that thing that you love. You still want to live and, and carry on, you know, certain things. You don't want to fall into that pit hole. But it happens a lot. Um, so these particular chakras, um, so delving deep into the self, these are, of course, this is talking about the four body. I want to talk about the four body systems, too, because healing these chakras can be a journey into delving deeper into them. So our four body systems is the, the mind, you know, our mental, our emotional, our physical, and our spiritual bodies. So those are all things that we know we need to keep in balance. So to assist with the healing of um, these three particular chakras that I just wanted to focus on, you can also use food, you know, um, therapy as well. Um, like I'd already kind of talked about color and then also um, the crystals. So the crystals for the heart chakra, pink and green. Um, there is um, green adventuring, there's emerald, 
there's um 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 yes uh, uh, uh where am I at uh Pink Burrow which is also called Morganite which is one of my favorite ones mm -hmm. and um Rose and of quartz. course, rose quartz. Mm -hmm. And quartz crystal can be used on any chakra. So mm. if you can only just get one crystal and you don't have any of those other ones, use your quartz crystal just the same. Um, I've been blessed to um, be um, in a, in initiated into what's called ethereal crystals. Anybody ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so ethereal crystals, it, it, it's, uh, it's a branch of the Reiki system, which has to do with um, being able to place ethereal crystals in people's bodies so when what? i work on people oh, if they wow. have organs that are weak or they need some extra something then ethereal crystals can be placed in the body and then they'll do their work and they'll dissolve and go back into the light and they're 400 Amazing. times more stronger than regular earth crystals now the reason this particular reiki system was developed was because we have a, a issue with people hoarding all of the really powerful crystals and mm -hmm. overpricing them to where a lot of us can get our hands on. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of crystals that are not accessible that started a thousand dollars for a tip. Okay, if you know anything about Herkimer diamonds or something like that, they're right, motivate all that kind of stuff. So, and there's a crystal that I want all of y'all. If y'all don't know about this, it's called Shungite. Who's ever heard of Shungite? Oh, yeah. I got some at home. Yes, this is what um, a lot of these machines use to clean the yeah. water, these pagan yeah. machines and stuff. You can go get it for $7 instead of spending five grand on this machine. So, um, but Shungite, Shungite is a whole, it's, it's a meteorite, but at the same time, this, this particular crystal is the only crystal out of the all of the crystals that is a natural, um, it, it has a natural, um, Oh, what's the why my words oh, right now? Purifying. Um, antibiotic. Right. It's a natural antibiotic. It's got what's called federines in it. And so these federines um, literally acts as a natural antibiotic. So yeah. in the middle of a pandemic, it's yeah. great to like use so. shungite, obviously. Um, and it also protects the auric field right along with labradite is great for protecting the auric field. Right, right along with black tourmaline, jet, Apache tears, any of those dark type of crystals are great. Um, so get into them because we get holes and we get tears in our auric field. And so these are crystals that repair that and keep a lot of stuff in because before we experience illness, it's an energy imbalance. It comes into your auric field. Then it gets to you and then it starts to metastasize wherever it is going to be in the body. So the more you can keep your auric field clean and clear and repair those holes and tears and things, because every day we're picking up new energy you're around new people, you're in new areas, you know, if you travel a lot. So the constant, you know, the constant need to pray and be in reverence and to do your energy and your clearing work is a necessity. Mm -hmm. We, Like Shake said, we can't take no breaks. Mm -hmm. It's an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, daytime pray too. Right. Okay. Against yeah, us. Daytime pray too, yes. Daytime mm -hmm. pray. Right. So. A lot too. Exactly. So, so I, I'm trying to remember the story. It was talking about like, you know, certain. What is it? Satan, you know, protects the children of of Allah. That's that's your 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 Satan. Everybody else is like, mm. you know, it might not be too good for you. You know, so it's a special a special covering with that, of course. So, um, of course, the heart chakra. Um, let me keep up where I'm at. So, foods for the heart, any green foods, you know, green leafy veggies, broccoli, green beans, kiwi, chlorophyll, spirulina, um, and spending time in nature around lush green leaves and trees. Just being in a, a green environment in nature is so important. You know, my body of water, um, you know, around, you know, but don't just be in nature, like, like experience nature. Some people just go and they sit on a, a bench and that's fine too. You know, like, yeah, meditate, but yeah, but, but, but smell the flower, hug the tree, roll around on the ground, sit on the ground, take your shoes off, walk on the grass, do some grounding, connect with the earth, you know, talk to the earth, talk to the tree, you know, listen to the birds, see if you can understand what they chirping about. Just, like, I'm saying like interact with the environment. Don't just be in the environment, but interact with the environment, but interact with your heart. Because when you really start doing it, like when nature starts to feel your heart energy, so I'm a, I'm a Reiki master, master energy practitioner. One of the things I can say is with that experience for me, 
Um, it's 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 the butterflies that just come and land on you. Ah. Yeah. It's 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 when you look down and you don't realize that your foot is next to an uh, ant hill, but mm -hmm. they're crawling all around your foot instead of yeah. touching you because mm -hmm. they feel your energy. They're not gonna bite you. They love you. Like they feel the your love. Too, like the bees too. Like the bees will come to yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They don't sing. They yeah. Like, like everything that, respects uh, your space, but mm -hmm. it's a loving thing. Like nothing's trying to hurt you. You ain't gotta worry about no wasps trying to bother you or whatever. Like. You know, you're just in tune with everything. And I had to learn this lesson because um, my house, wood porch, so carpenter bees, the issue in the summer months, and they'll get in front of your door and kind of battle mm -hmm. with you a little bit. And they like to go right in your face and kind of hover like this. Like they like to be intimidating. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, oh, can I get my house? Uh, excuse me. Uh, like I'm trying to have this conversation. And then finally it was like, no, you got to be one with the bee. Mm. Quit trying to control the bee and just coexist with the bee. Mm. You keep trying to be in opposition like it's your enemy. No, it's just doing what it's innately programmed to do. So just like just just be cool. So one day I'm walking up a porch and I, I see I see this one this one that fly up and I said, B, can we just share the space? Just share the space. You can be here and I can be here. Can we just coexist? I kid you not, that bee flew right on and let me. I had no more problems with that bee. But it was just something about the change of frequency and the thought that we haven't been taught how to interact with nature, you know, in a certain kind of way. Like we've been taught that we're separate, but we are connected. We don't know that God is in nature. If we say it's in the deer, if we say, you know, then how can it not be in the tree? How can it not be in the grass? How can it not be in the air? So when we talk about love, it's not even just about you. It's about loving everything. Because most people who um, heart chakras are really shut down. They don't really like to spend time in nature. You know what they say? Yeah. I don't like being. It's bees out there. It's it's, it's hot. Yeah. I don't. Uh, it, it's. Uh. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know some people that just don't like to go outside. And go outside hiking. What? I, mm -mm, my, my germ might sweat out. You know. And people be like that. You know, and you be like, you don't want to go outside. And how many of y'all know kids that don't like to go outside? They stuck on video games. When I was younger, I used to love, like, I got in trouble for missing curfew. We used to want to be outside so much. Now these kids just want to play video games and, like, eat, like, hot Cheetos all day. And they really they don't want to go outside. They don't want to experience. You know, I had a friend that was telling me a story about, um, when he uh, when he had, uh, met his daughter's mother, she had a son already, and they had done like pampered this little boy so much. At this point, he was about two, and he said he took that little boy outside and and sit him down in the grass, and he was standing there going like this, like pick me up, like he didn't even know what grass was. He said he pushed that little boy to get used to it and learn how to see this grass, and he had no problem out of that no more. But it just says a lot about how just even some people just don't even take their kids outside when they're like toddlers and stuff to like play you know everything is inside you know playgrounds inside you know they don't they they don't get the experience falling and scraping their knee no more like we used to like every kid needs a proper ringworm okay to fully feel yeah strawberry every kid every kid needs you know a couple of knee scrapes like it's just it's just what it is you know let your kids go outside and experience the sun and the trees and just be outside if you got to get them a pet to get them to play in the backyard or do what you got to do but we have to get these kids back active and get them back outside they need to I, I so on Facebook I remember they were running an ad about training people how to do play dates with kids how to teach them how to play merry-go-round and hide and go see I said wait a minute we don't got that far now to where we got to create parent groups a training really? to, to teach our kids how to play outside. <laughs> That's how bad it is now. Yeah. People need support groups to know how to play with their kids outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they need support groups. Never heard so that. people like get together and like teach their kids how to play and swing and stuff. It's a real, it's a real movement. It's a real it's thing. A real it's a real thing. Made this I gotta look up it's a real, gotta it's a real thing. It's a real thing. So, all right. So anyway. We'll write along. All right, so crystals for crystals for the heart. So I did want to say moss agate um, as well. So these all promote um, compassion, love, inward and outward healing, calming, soothing, um, and peace-inducing. All right. 
Um, foods for the throat chakra and crystals. So crystals for the throat chakra, that's lapis lazuli, um, aquamarine, yeah, anything blue. Yeah, um, turquoise. So lapis lazuli and turquoise is a little interesting because people don't really know that they're like a brother and sister crystal. Mm. Lapis lazuli is really is more so like um, to be used at night and um, turquoise is more so to be used in the daytime. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, oh, also, if you're, if you're using shungite, a lot of people don't know shungite dispels all of what it takes in every night around about 10 o'clock. Don't sleep in your shungite mm -hmm. because you're reabsorbing the energy that it needs to release. Oh. And you also should put it in a, like the opposite side of the house at night so it's not releasing in the room that you're in. Because when we sleep, our subconscious is wide awake. <laughs> so if you've been wearing your shungite and you just notice that you're getting headaches all the time or body aches or something and you just don't feel right, it's because you're reabsorbing the energy and you're sleeping in it and you're wearing it all the time. Now you can wear it every day, but you need to take it off every night. Do not. That's a crystal you don't sleep with. It's a crystal you don't put under your pillow like you do some crystals. So it's got its own protocols. So, But it's the only crystal that, that, that does that, though. Interestingly enough, but it's, it's self-cleaning every day. And so it usually activates around about 10 o'clock. Uh, so just like selenite? Selenite, selenite self-cleaning too. Yeah, it's the only one that does yeah. it. Citrine is self-cleaning as well. Really? So, but most all the other crystals, if you're, if you're wearing your crystals every day, you should be cleaning your crystals at least once a week. Mm -hmm. Sage, um, run it under cool water mm. you can bury it in the um ground mm -hmm. if you have house plants you can sit it on top of the dirt on the house plant or, mm -hmm. or plant it that it won't hurt the plant it's gonna you know dissolve and neutralize in the soil um i'm not a fan of of, of um soaking your crystals in salt water because obviously felonite yeah, yeah, would definitely right. you know because the the density and all that stuff matters so if, if you're gonna soak your crystals in salt water um, or just, you know, water in general, because over time it can erode it. So just make sure that you, you do your diligence to make sure that you have a crystal that is hard enough to um, support that. Otherwise, you can deal with, you know, colors changing and all kinds of stuff. I'm, I'm a fan of putting your crystals outside under the moon, not so much under the sun, mm -hmm. mainly because the sun can fade your crystals a lot. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. like you can damage them that way. But... Quartz crystal is okay, but some of your crystals, if they're real crystals, they're mm -hmm. probably okay. But we got a lot of fake crystals out here. Mm -hmm. But that's that's another story. I'm trying mm -hmm. to go too far. Reiki that. help it too, huh? Reiki. I probably put Reiki on. Yes. My oh yeah, yeah. If your who's cool. Reiki masters in here? Anybody? Who I do Reiki? Okay. Okay. Cool. So yeah, yeah, you just hold them in your hand. You know, run that energy about 25 seconds. Mm -hmm. Set it away from yourself for a little while. You know, if it's for you. You can wear it. If it's for someone else, you cut your ties. So that way, you know, your energy ain't being pulled all around. So that's that. So yeah, you can definitely use it. All right. So the, um, all right. So yeah, aquamarine, um, blue lace, agate, and um, angel, angel light. Good for strengthening the voice and our expression. Um, foods for the throat, blueberries, blue raspberries, figs, plums, raisins. So all of those blue blue foods, right? We don't have a whole lot of them, but we got enough. Um, foods for the solar plexus and crystals, what? Citrine, you could use tiger's eye. Um, that's, you know, that'll work. Any quartz crystal, that's fine. Um, and so foods, yellow peppers, yellow lentils, yellow squash, um, bananas, squash, and oats, all right? And... So the crystals also amber. Amber, I love amber. All right. That's a good one. Um, huh? That's a good one. Yeah, I love amber. So the heart in Sanskrit is called Anahata. And it is represented by 12 lotus flowers. One plus two is three. We they go that three again, which is the number of expression and um it's how we express through our heart. So if our heart is like three energy and that's the number of expression, then how you express your heart obviously matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's me. Life right. number three. Yeah, yes, me too. Day. So I was born on the 21st mm -hmm. of August. So that three energy, you can express a lot of things through that, good or bad. So you got to be careful. <laughs> All right, because in traditional Chinese medicine, um, the heart is called the shin. Okay, so the shin is the Chinese word for like deity, spirit, heart. It's mm -hmm. the origin of the mental life and therefore the monarch of all the other organs. The heart is the mm -hmm. only organ capable of recognizing assessing and truly feeling the spectrum of one's emotional experiences shin is yang masculine bright and active don't we want our heart to be bright and active mm -hmm. i can't think of a better description for our heart so 
real quick, I just wanted to um, kind of do a quick um, synopsis just on um, the shin right click and then we'll do the heart breathing and then we're going to close this thing on out. So the shin, so the heart beholds the shin, the lungs contain the po, the liver commands the whom, the um, spleen grounds the yi and the kidneys are keepers of the z. All right, so the shin, um, let me move on, the po. So the po is a spirit mind um, stored in the lungs. It integrates with us at our first breath and, distinct, and disintegrates at the end of life when breath ceases. Okay, mm. so this is called the corporal or the animal spirit. All right, so, um, and then the yi, which is the thought. Mm. The yi is the spirit mind stored by the spleen. It has to do with thought, intellect, and comprehension, as well as um, intention and creativity. The spleen organ in traditional Chinese medicine is a major organ of digestion, separating and transforming useful nutrients from waste products. On a physical level, a weak spleen can result in poor digestion of food. On a spirit level, a weak spleen and a weak yi as a result can cause poor digestion of thoughts. This means there may be trouble effectively um, deliberating and instead a person may find themselves overthinking or ruminating on their worries. They may lack clear intention and therefore they may feel foggy brain or bored and intimidated. So that sounds exactly like what would happen to you if you don't correct that and that gets up to that third eye, right? Mm -hmm. So the hoon, um, which is the ethereal soul. Okay, so um, the hoon is its own level of consciousness whose vitality depends on its ability to connect and disengage with the mind to come and go. This is going to be connected. So when we talk about the dream realm, we talk about astral projecting. Mm -hmm. This is going to fall into that. So again, all of this is, is a connection, right? So this is talking about out of body during sleep and dreaming, um, being beyond one's everyday life and circumstances through the pursuit of their, their life goals. Um, this is also through the planning of projects and paths needed to accomplish them and beyond the self towards others and fostering and maintaining relationships. So this is kind of also like a, a, a tethering, you know, kind of thing, just a little bit to um, get certain things done to, to build healthy relationships. And it's, it's kind of connecting that, that heart energy. There's a, there's a level of, of tethering, but not to be misunderstood with um, attachment in a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. you, don't you, you can love something without being attached to it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because I've, I've learned that there there is a difference between um, judgment and discernment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Judgment is when you are, when you, you don't have all the facts. You're judging something, but it's not based in truth. It's not shrouded in truth. Mm -hmm. you're, you're dealing with surface level concepts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Discernment means you've walked out that research, you understand mm -hmm. what you're dealing with, and you're able to make a clear decision. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. So that's why judging is not good, but discernment is great. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the Z, which is the will, okay? The Z is our willpower. Um, the spirit mind, it is stored in the kidneys. I cannot tell y'all how important mm -hmm. your kidneys are. The kidneys are the batteries of the body. And then there's a lot of sayings about the kidneys. Mm -hmm. You got two good kidneys, you're supposed to go to heaven. Or imagine something I heard about it. <laughs> if you're good or bad, as long as your kidneys are good. That's what they always say to me. It, yeah, well, you, you, right, yeah, and so, so that's kind of right. So to jump on that, it's deep because the kidneys being the batteries of the body. So that's why you got two. So it's like, you know, you think about it, it's, it's, it's good if you share a kidney, if you have to or you want to do that, but the reality is it is going to create an imbalance in your body. Mm -hmm. Because we have two for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let nobody tell your tonsils don't matter. We got them for a reason. <laughs> People just always feel like we have like body parts that don't do nothing out of the smoke. Like, I'm like, how do we get here when we really don't need our tonsils? Why do we, what do you mean we don't need them? <laughs> what do you mean I only need one kidney? <laughs> Yeah. You see my face? That's how I be like. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, it's just, it's crazy. But the kidneys, you know, if your kidneys are not functioning properly, you cannot reproduce. Hmm. If your kidneys are not functioning properly, you cannot reproduce. That's right. wow. A woman will not conceive with poor kidney health. Yeah. And hmm. if she has weak kidneys, she might conceive but can't carry the term. 
This is a lot of times what happens when we talk about Chinese traditional medicine, you get into the meridians and things like that. Then it's like, oh, you can achieve pregnancy, but you keep miscarriages. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> see, now we start to see how yeah. the blockages start to affect us on a physical level right. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So when them batteries ain't working right, you know what I'm saying? Because if you got to produce this child in your body and your batteries is weak, how you going to do it? You don't have enough energy to bring that child into birth. Mm -hmm. You just don't have it. You have no chi right. in your kidneys. Your magnetic force. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, because your, your kidneys also carry yin and yang energy, that balance. So if you lose that, then it's a lot of things you, you, you can't do. You know, the kidneys also deal with like frustration and deal with fear too. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So um, <laughs> it's interesting how some of these things transfer over. I'm speaking on this because when we talk about having children with these imbalances in our bodies, mm. a lot of times those children are born with those same weaknesses. Mm. And so when they say your children are your teachers and they mirror you, they're coming in exactly with what you gave them. So why are you mad at them? Because they acting up. You acting up. Mm -hmm. You ain't right. So why are you mad at them for not being right? Mm -hmm. You want to be loud and drink and hang out all weekend and you mad because they too loud in their room? Mm -hmm. But that's your energy though. Mm -hmm. You looking at yourself and you annoyed. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Who you mad at? <laughs> they came from you. They're of you. Mm. Mm -hmm. You gave them that. You brought them in with these weak kidney kidneys and cold heartedness. <laughs> you ever seen an angry baby? Yes. That yes. just slap and pull and yes. yanking. Yes. And I mean, don't get me wrong, some babies like are yep. curious, but it's a difference yeah. though. You can tell a baby that has low heart energy. Mm, They're yeah. very mean, very angry, very colicky, very they cry all the time. They don't sleep. They they have ear infections. They have it's like mm. every they, they always in the hospital for something. Mm, These are kids yeah. that's always sick. Their immune system was compromised when they came. Mm. So they don't have no real immune system strength, uh, you know, so like you have to, it's a lot. So their mind is already, you know, not where it needs to be at. So they, they come in off. Mm -hmm. no way they come in off kilter, mm -hmm. off balance. And when it's real bad, they won't latch on to the breast. Oh, mm -hmm. I ain't never seen a baby. A that. woman who heart chakra is usually affected, the baby don't want your milk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They need love in that milk. Mm -hmm. This is serious. That yeah. takes a bottle. Yeah. 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 And so, because I'm a doula, too, so mm -hmm. it's 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 deep because you know when you know it's like ooh, it's it's rough because there's nothing more sad than a woman who wants to breastfeed and can't and don't know why her baby denies her breast. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. So energy. that's all. That's a hard feeling. And, you know, and don't get me wrong, you know, this is something different from a woman who just physically can't for whatever reason. It's like, no, she's producing milk, but the babies don't want it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't even want it in the bottle. Mm -hmm. This thing is really deep because when we talk about these indigo and crystal children coming in, because so I, I'm, I'm the founder director of the Indigo School of Light Institute for the Golden Age. It's called the Indigo School of Light Institute for the Golden Age. Mm. So I, I, I am an usher of the yeah, golden age, if you will. And mm. so I work with these children, you know, and these children are very clear about what they want and what they don't want, what they'll accept and what they will not accept. And so it's a really, really, it's a really deep 